podcast, which is my podcast about knitting, crocheting, and my journey to becoming a full-time knitwear and crochet designer. My name is Carmen, and you can find me on Instagram as newleafdesigns.nl, and I will list all of the other things right here. So this is mostly a knitting and crochet podcast, but today I want to start with talking a bit about some important conversations that are being had in the craft community um, for the most part on Instagram but um, also in some podcasts and um, I just wanted to say something about that although I'm really nervous about it and um, yeah so the thing is that a lot of people um, uh, people of color are not feeling accepted in our knitting community. So it all started a couple of weeks ago um, when a blog post sparked this whole uh, conversation about race. And um, I don't really want to talk about the thing that sparked this conversation. Um, but about the conversation itself, as I think that's more important. Um, and I've been hearing a lot of people say, oh, you know, knitting is my happy place. I go here to feel safe. Uh, I go to here to be happy. I just want it to be this happy place. And I understand that uh, knitting and crocheting, uh, let's just say craft. Craft is my happy place as well. But I've come to understand that craft is not a happy or safe even space for everyone. And that we, meaning white people, are actively making people of color feel that they don't belong. And, um, it's probably unintentional, but that doesn't matter. We are making them feel that, they're don't, that they don't belong. It's not their happy place or safe place. And the thing is that we can change that. So um, I am still on a huge learning curve myself, but what I wanted to do is take you along with me on this journey. So uh, now I'm gonna be very, I'm gonna try to be very gentle in um, what I'm going to say uh, because I know that uh, a lot of white people like myself, we easily get offended or defensive, which is understandable, but, um, but it's important that you listen. That's the important thing. So um where you can start um if you feel like okay okay i'm listening where can i start uh there is this uh pdf that you can download and it's a workbook by layla sod layla f sod and she so she's just layla f sod on instagram it's uh, I've not read I've not read it completely myself, but she's uh, written this workbook that you can you can um, sign up via her Instagram or via her website, and then um, you get the download link via email, and then you can download it and read it. It is titled "Me and White Supremacy." Now, uh, don't let the title scare you. Um, it is. You know it will make you feel uncomfortable that's good um, reading it will continue to make you feel uncomfortable uh, because the workbook will kind of hold up a mirror to show you what kind of behavior is making is contributing to people of color uh, not feeling included uh, not feeling welcomed and um, so just go on and read it um, begin to understand so and uh, we can change our actions that's the most important part to not just 
understand but also um, understand what needs to be changed and then change it uh, and I have some examples and I found those really helpful for me uh, so I'm gonna read them to you so uh, the first example that I found really really helpful is by Petite Knitter on Instagram or the petite knitter. So she um, highlighted some conversations that she was having as a person of color with white people. <laughs> and, um, and most white people don't intend to hurt, um, don't intend to be racist. But she had this example, uh, a person was saying, oh, well, but you know, I, I mean, well, I mean, I would love to go to Africa to help, just like I would like to go to Norway to travel and work. And, and then um, the petite knitter said, well, okay, but did you notice how you just said that you wanted to go to Africa to help and to Norway to work? See how you're um, how you're talking about Africa and Norway as different uh, countries. Yeah, I mean, yeah, see what you're doing there. And um, so, yes, what we do is mostly an, an unintentional, but I've come to understand that that is usually what hurts the most. And I've learned that from Sounds Like a Win, also on Instagram and she had this amazing post but I'm gonna just read a little part of it yes she quotes Martin Luther King uh, he says it's the white moderate that is the great stumbling block in the strike toward freedom as shallow understanding from people of goodwill is more frustrating than absolute misunderstanding from people of ill will and having read that go over to Kalisha who is Nadi Nadira Tani on Instagram I will put everything on the screen and she has a little highlight right there it's uh you didn't really see it but there is this little highlight right there click it it says I am here and um, it's it's um, she explains and she has some examples of uh, how and when she doesn't feel included and it is so vulnerable and it just you can feel her pain and um, the thing is that we have the ability to change this. And I don't mean just white people. I mean, all of us have the ability to change this. People of color don't need us white people to save them. I wanna really emphasize that. They don't need us to save them, but they need us to understand and to change our behavior. And, um, and some things that we can do is actively support uh i don't know how to say this if i if i say bipoc or b-i-p-o-c it means black and indigenous people of color and indigenous i had to look this up because my although i have a, a big uh, english vocabulary this was not one of the words that i knew so indigenous means native uh, so for example native americans uh, native uh, australians um, uh, native norwegians probably um, so black and indigenous uh, and people of color so that's essentially non-white people so um that's a term that is very often used. So actively supporting BIPOC. Is that, is that what I just say? But I feel like it's so long to say BIPOC. BIPOC. Anyway, so actively supporting them. 
um, and I saw this by Noriko, who is Nori Chan Knits on Instagram. Uh, she created this hashtag Knit Harder. Um, Nori Chan Knits. And um, so to just, um, it's not a game. She really emphasizes that. You don't get points for this. You don't get kudos. Um, it's very important to realize that. But just think about it. Um, she has all of these ways in which she can be more inclusive or start to be more inclusive. For example, looking for a indie dyer of color, looking for a designer of color, um, and making their patterns or buying their yarns and using their yarns. But, okay. So this is still a difficult topic and I understand this and please bear with me while I find my words. <laughs> um, so the objective is to make people of color more visible because visibility matters. It means, you know, when, when you see yourself um, you have this feeling of belonging. You say, oh, it's okay for me to be here. Um, on, you know, a note that I can relate to, but is very, very different, is um, that, you know, I'm, I'm super tiny. Um, I'm 1 meter 58. I don't know what that is in feet, um, but, um, you know, in a, in a country where everyone is tall, I mean, people will actually ask me twice, are you really Dutch? Because, mm, and then of course my boyfriend is two meters. So, uh, yeah, so I often feel like, oh gosh, I'm so tiny. Uh, um, you know, I'm usually the shortest, shortest, tiniest person in the room. And, um, you know, so um, I would actively like Google uh, actresses under 1 meter 60 and I would find them and I would be so happy. I would find Eva Longoria. I would find um, <laughs> Penichair, I think. Uh, I would, you know. Uh, and singers Kylie Minogue, Janelle Monet, I would find them and I would think, okay, you know, there are successful tiny people out there. Um, you know, this is a very insignificant thing, but it's, I kind of, I know what it means to see yourself and um, it, it just, it just helps so much. Um, and I think from this point of view, Noriko was also trying to do this with Knit Harder, although um, she kind of made it feel like it was a game and she, she said, okay, I realize this, you know, everybody's learning her, even people of color are learning here. Um, it's not a game, it should not, if you're making something that is designed by a woman of color or a person of color, your whip is not your trophy. It's not like, look at this, I'm one of the good ones. Um, yeah, but it is really important that we search out um, designers of color and makers of color and um, um, indie dyers of color. Can I even say that? Person, people of indie, <laughs> people of indie, people of color who are indie dyers and designers. And what I found really helpful, because I was saying this and some people were saying, well, okay, well, isn't this reverse racism? Like you're actively looking for people of a certain race to find their patterns. Isn't that reverse racism? Okay, fair question. Um, I found the Instagram stories of Ply Magazine really helpful for that. I'm gonna read one to you. Um, so Ply Magazine says, it's up to us to make the fiber community safe and welcoming for BIPUC. Not being actively racist is not enough. You've got to, un you've got to actively be inclusive. You've got to actively be anti-racist. 
you've got to actively seek out BI POC as designers, as spinners, as dyers, as companions. And I hear you again. But why? Isn't it more fair if I just purchase their wares when and if they appeal to me? That seems less racist, just taking the race out of it. Except that's not actually feasible in the world we live in. It's not. You are far less likely to see their work, their designs, their dyed fiber, their spun yarns because of our current paradigms. For now, you've got to do a little work to make the world a better and safer place. Yes. So, um, reading that really made me feel like, okay, I have to, uh, well, not have to, well, actually I do. I have to seek out, um, people of color who are designers. And let me tell you, there are some amazing, amazing designers that were just invisible to us before. And, um... I have discovered a lot more by following the hashtag diversity. I'm gonna spell it out right here, diversity. And such as Ocean by the Sea, Ocean, who is a uh, indie dyer, and she has a shop update coming, coming up. And I have a self-imposed yarn bag, but I think I might just make an exception for this because it's so, so beautiful. And I actually think by the time this podcast goes out, yes, <laughs> it might already um, have happened. But uh, yeah. And um, one of the others is uh, Shay. I'm going to look up her Instagram name. Oh, right. Um, so knit and crochet. I thought that was so clever. So she's actually called Shay, so then she's done crochet um and she has this amazing top the as if tea i'm gonna show it right here and i wanted this to be my edinburgh shirt or a sweater i um, i want to have an edinburgh sweater because it's gonna be really really cold and uh Frankly, if something's gonna have mohair, I wanna have it long sleeved, I think. But uh, I so wanna knit this, and I'm gonna show you my yarn choices uh, just in a minute. Uh, but seriously, Shay, oh, she's, she has such gorgeous designs. And uh, the same is for Tina Say. Tina, Tina Say Knits. I'm also gonna spell it right here and uh, she has just published this sweater um, this cardigan which is the home sweet home right home sweet home knit formula right home sweet home knit formula I'm gonna, also gonna put a picture right here because it is an amazing cardigan and um, just by following this hashtag diversity I've come across so many amazing designers, amazing knitters, crocheters, and um, yeah, I mean, this is just a really small thing that we can do, but it's a start. And if you read the workbook, just figure out for yourself, okay, what can I do? And I think we can all start from there. I, uh, <laughs> I wanted to give my two cents and um, yes and I am gonna moderate comments as well um, please think before you say something in the comment section and I am gonna be moderating it and if I deem your comment to be not appropriate uh, or offensive then I will take it out um, so please be uh, mindful of that. In the rest of this episode, I kind of want to talk about, um, my dream knitting. And I've just, uh, talked about it a little bit with the as if tea. Um, and I actually also wanted to show all of my whips, but I think that would make this episode way too long. 
but um, yeah, I think I'll save that for next time. But if you're interested in all of my whips, you can, I um, posted some on Instagram already. Um, and it was quite a shocker because, uh, <laughs> okay, maybe I should make this episode about all of my whips. No, I'm just gonna give you a quick introduction. So, I have 15 whips. My first, my initial count was 12, but uh, yeah, since that I have found three more. And actually I finished one of them, but then I cast on a new one. But then I finished that as well. Okay, so maybe I have 14 now. Yeah, but still, <laughs> still 14 or 15, oh my god. So um, I'm just gonna share the whips that I have finished, so FOs, and whips that I am working on. So that's three in total, I think. And then I'm gonna talk some dream knitting with you guys and why I'm not participating in Make Nine. Okay, so the first finished object, I have two, um, is this cowl. It is the Timber Cowl, which is my own pattern. It's for free on my blog. It's crochet in the round and you crochet in the back loop. That's what creates this, these lines. And I don't know what happened, but it's wider here than here. I think I may have been less stressed for the first part <laughs> and then <laughs> stressed. Um, or I don't know, or maybe this is wider because it has been stretched more, it's, you know, because it has been in the bag more, I don't know. Um, I made sure to crochet a very loose chain. So it kind of shows here, but as soon as you wear it, you don't see it anymore. So yes, I'm aware this cowl is very long, but I'm gonna show you <laughs> how it looks. <laughs> Okay, so uh, it actually helps with the bottom part being wider. Um, oh, maybe it's wider because I've tried it on. Maybe it is. Yeah, and I haven't blocked this yet. And I think I will because it's kind of crinkly in some places. Yes, but look at this. I really like it. Yeah, it's really nice and um, so this doesn't go with my coat because my coat is um, it's one of those woolly trench coats and it kind of leaves this triangle bare so this is not one for me but um, I think this would go well with coat that zip up like this and um, yeah, kind of cover your whole neck like this. Um, yeah, it just it's very comfortable and you can fold it over to have some more breathing space. Um, yeah, but I just really like how it turned out. It's way longer than the timber cowl that I had originally made. So uh, the timber cowl pattern it also comes with a wristies pattern, so fingerless gloves, um, and I have made those uh, one pair of wrist wristies and a cow out of one ball of Escapius R Tribe, and um, this cowl um, is made with one ball as well. But I mean, I used up the entire ball for this, so that's why it's so long so yeah but i'm really liking it and also the colors i mean it looks like i've used a, a striping yarn but it's um a variegated yarn but because i'm using uh double crochets us terminology uh it looks like stripes i mean this would look totally different 
in a different stitch. So yeah, so I'm really liking this. I'm really proud of this. And uh, so uh, this cowl is worked in the round, uh, in closed rounds. So you can see uh, where I've joined the round and then I chain uh, three stitches and go on to the next round. So you see kind of the color shift there. Um, but I think that's okay. And with wearing, you, you know, you kind of just um, scoot that over to the back of your neck and then it's fine. You know, with the wearing, it's going to be very wrinkled anyway. I mean, very scrunched up. So you don't really see it. Um, yeah, so really happy with this. So the yarn is Scapius Art Tribe. It's really, really soft. It's 70% superwash merino and 30% acrylic. Um, you can wash it. Um, yeah, it's great. Um, and the second finished object is actually, was actually my new cast on. Um, and it was so quick. So I've used Scapius Namaste, which is a wool blend yarn. You might recognize this um, from the Yarndale video because I got these at Yarndale. I was there with Scapius. And uh, so Namaste is 70, no, it's 50% wool and 50% acrylic. And yeah, so the wool makes it really warm and the acrylic makes it really affordable. <laughs> and um, it doesn't make it washable, it's just, just hand wash. But you know, you don't really need to wash hats all that often. <gasps> I just, I just um, blurted out that it was a hat. Yes, I made a hat. And it's not blocked yet. I'm gonna, uh, I just finished it uh, uh, last night. So I am gonna block it right after this podcast and put a palm on it. So, are you ready? This is my new hat. And I really, really like it. Yeah, so I did some color work, long floats. But yeah, it doesn't really matter with hats, I think. And those parts are where I sewed in the ends. And really sewing ends, I mean, weaving ends in on color work, so fun. So fun. It's like visible mending, but you know, only visible on the inside. But I mean that you go like under and over uh, strands and then you create this kind of, I don't know. Yeah, so cute. Um, and I think it's fun how you kind of see the pattern on the inside as well. Can you kind of see the zigzag here? So I've used three colors uh, and I'm going to make another one as well, a bigger one. So this is going to be, this is a female size, I think. This is uh, 60 stitches. Um, it's kind of like for 55, 55 centimeter circumference, I think. And it's going to be blocked, so gonna loosen up a little bit and then I'm gonna make another one and I hope I have enough yarn and I'm gonna use the uh, the rusty orange red where I've used the blue and the blue where I've used the red and yeah and I hope I have enough to make a matching hat um, yeah, so let me try it on for you. So yeah, it's not blocked yet, so it's kind of weird looking still. And it's gonna have a pom-pom on it, and I'm gonna need your opinions. So this is how it looks. I hope that wasn't focused. <laughs> My hair is so static right now. Um, yeah, so I really like it and um, it's my first hat design. No, it's not. <laughs> I've designed a hat before um, with eyelets, 
and then I realized eyelids maybe not the best thing for hats so yeah um, but the minute I felt this yarn I thought this will be such a great hat um, and I wanted to make a pom-pom but as you know or maybe you don't so I'm telling you pom-poms eat yarn so I might just add one of these so getting out getting out my pom-poms so I'm not gonna use this one but it's really really cute it's such a tiny pom-pom um, okay so these are the pom-poms that I had um, I believe that these ones are recycled from old hats and this one and then these I bought in so this is a little uh, stash acquisition time um, I bought these last week in Germany I was shopping and you can see they are keychains yes but they were two euro fifty and I thought okay well pom-pom usually costs more than that so I'm gonna buy these and then see they have a little loop here see and then it's attached to this ring but of course I can open that and then I can take off the pom-pom and yeah and so let me hear your opinion on this so I have these ones kind of reddish ones and I have a black grayish one so is this one this one fit and the thing is um, uh, I don't remember who uh, who said this but it was an amazing uh, piece of advice so I'm gonna attach a button to this and or a ribbon and you can just push the button just through the stitches and you have a detachable pom-pom or a, a ribbon and then you thread the ribbon through and then you tie it on the inside that's possible too um, it makes your hat washable and you know you can take the pom-pom off when you don't want to but who doesn't want pom-poms right so I think this is really cute um, and because I'm gonna knit two and photograph them together I thought the pom-poms need to match as well so I don't want to uh, attach this one to the one and then and then a really muted pom-pom to the other so even these I don't think I don't know so I thought okay I can either add the same pom-pom to the hats or or the, the black and the red one. Oh this one looks nice yeah this one looks nice but I'm gonna I think I'm gonna finish the second hat first and then try on the pom-poms but let me know if you like the red one better for this hat or the black one or the gray, gray one yeah let me know and uh, so I was kind of experimenting with this uh, hat um, you see these so um, I wanted to try purling in uh, color work and because I had seen other designers use it and I thought oh that's awesome and I want to try that as well uh, but then I found out oh it's not really straightforward so um, so what I did is in the row with this in the round with this uh, white yarn and I came to the place and I purled with white yarn that doesn't look good so um, so first I just knit this round with the blue and then the white. I also knit 
all stitches and then in the row above above the white stitch and using the blue stitch to purl the white stitch am i making sense so the stitch above the white stitch i'm purling that one and that makes the white stitch look like you know it's just a tiny bar just a tiny dot right there otherwise it would look like this right so yeah i just wanted to experiment i mean you can leave it you don't have to purl the stitch on top of it but i thought it was kind of cute to just have you know a tiny dot there but sometimes if you stretch it too too much then it just kind of disappears well of course now it doesn't disappear as i'm trying to <laughs> show this to you um yeah this one is larger because that's the first one and uh, the yarn end was attached to that so that's why that one is larger yeah so kind of like this uh i hope i will have enough yarn to do the second one and uh hey momo hey. momo's coming to check it out hey momo my pom pom momo momo's like i'm softer than that pom pom Oh, would you come and say hi? No? Oh, but they love you, Mama. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I will try to put in some extra Momo footage at the end, as I always try. Yeah. Oh, I have a really fun one for you guys this time. I remember which one. Yeah, super fun. Definitely check around. Um, definitely hang around and check it out. Okay, so let me know which pom-pom and I'm gonna block this and knit the second one yeah okay so the project I've been working on most of the time um, not enough as I would like but yeah um, is a cardigan and I have to say this is the cardigan with the most difficult destruction construction destruction construction that I've ever made <laughs> and I I had to message the designer a couple of times I know because I just couldn't figure it out and if I just would have followed the instructions it would have been completely fine but of course being a designer myself sometimes i just read the instructions and if i don't get it i assume it's wrong and it isn't but that's just how i work so um um yes so i'm trying to figure out how to show this to you because it is still looking it's not really well it's kind of looking like a cardigan but not how you would expect a cardigan to look so this is the older cardigan by Susan Walsh that has been published in the Yarn Folk bookazine and it's so pretty I mean look at these sleeves so feminine and then these motives so last time I had just finished the sleeve so you start from the sleeves and then you work this part and then you stop and then you work the other sleeve and then and then you work the, this tiny strip so kind of yeah like this and then so you rake this down and then up and down in rows and then you make the strip on this side and at that point i was like what what am i making <laughs> and then you attach the yarn again to that strip and make it wider here 
and then also on the other side. And then you put the sleeve and the little strip together and join motifs in between. And then suddenly you've got the front of the cardigan attached to the sleeve. What? So yeah, I'm going to try put it on for you. <laughs> I think this would be better if I add some stitch markers. Let me just do that. Okay, I've run out of locking stitch markers, so this will have to do. <laughs> okay, so that's the left side. Okay, okay, I'm just gonna put that on first. Momo is playing with some paper in the background, so you might be able to hear that. Okay, okay, this is actually the first time trying on. Okay. Ooh, ooh. Okay. Momo, seriously! <laughs> so there's gonna be, I think it needs to, yeah, the back needs to dip a little bit like that. Yeah, there's gonna be a button band still. I really like it though. Maybe a tad too big. But you know, that's what you get for experimenting because I am making the smallest size, which would have been too small for me if I used the yarn that was recommended, I think. But this is not the yarn I was recommended, so this is a slightly thicker yarn. So yeah, it becomes bigger. So you see, um, between here I still have to crochet motifs all the way, all the way down. See? Oh, I'm really excited about this. And then uh, you crochet, uh, single crochets around the neckline and down the back. Yeah, oh, I like it. I like it really much and there's gonna be same kind of edging as here it's gonna be around the hem as well oh I hope it doesn't get too big otherwise I might have to gift it to someone but I really like it yes I really like this it's very very feminine Momo Okay, I might have to take a break and play with Momo because she's playing with everything, including yarn, which is not good. Momo! Momo? Oh no. Okay, sorry you guys, she doesn't want to stay. Okay, so I'm loving these motives. Loving this cardigan. Might be a tad too big, especially since it may grow in blocking, but it's cotton, so probably won't grow too much. But because of the filet crochet, it might. Yeah, because the yarn I'm using is Scapius Swirl Lot, which is a blend of 60% cotton, 40% acrylic, Really beautiful color. This one is called Mango, colorway 853. This is my third ball, and I think that will be enough for the whole thing. And I am using my bag from Bed of Roses that I got in a kit. Uh, with yarn from uh, Craftfulness. They had a nice collaboration together and uh, yeah, so this bag is by Bed of Roses and it's pink and the other side kind of like a velvety feel 
has some cute stitch markers on here as well. Progress keepers, I should say. And yes, flowers, flowers and pink. That's my main thing. All right, so <laughs> played with Momo a little bit. Then the delivery guy came for the groceries. Yes, I buy groceries online and it's the best thing ever because I, if I go grocery shopping, I spend so much time in the supermarket. Um, yeah, and then I'm home way too late and whatever. So my dream knitting and why I'm not doing the make nine. Wow. So back to my dream knitting and why I'm not doing the make nine. So actually the biggest reason why I'm not doing the make nine is because I can't think of nine projects that I would want to make right now. <laughs> and I don't want to add nine projects to that list actually, because nine projects is a lot. Uh, I remember last year I did not do a make nine, but a design nine. Uh, three free patterns, three commissions, and three paid patterns. And this year I was thinking if I would do the make the design nine again, but I think I'm I'm not gonna set any like deadlines for myself or you know goals for myself for designing. I'm just gonna see how it goes. I mean, I do three free patterns every year at least. Um, and I want to do some pay patterns too and some commissions too. That's just, you know, extras and, you know, <laughs> if that's, um, they will come anyway. But, <clears throat> so this year, uh, with inclusivity in mind, I wanted to knit or crochet at least three things that are designed by uh, pe people of color. So uh, the first thing is going to be the As If T by Shea. Um, and the As If T is, um, the inspiration comes from the movie uh, Clueless, where Cher, uh, played by Alicia Silverstone, um, she goes to gym class and everyone has to wear uh, the t -shirt, white t-shirt and she wears uh, a tank top over it as to kind of like say like hey I'm I'm still the fashion queen um, and uh, she kind of based her um, uh, her inspiration on that because uh, if you see the T I'm gonna put it right here you see that there's this kind of shape like the tank top in as if um, but kind of the reverse shape so it's uh, mohair up here and then um, um, I believe they actually use DK or Aaron in the pattern but what I have here is fingering weight so because I thought it was mohair and fingering weight um, but then I looked at the pattern uh, and it was uh, Aaron weight I think so I'm not sure if that's gonna work out for me uh, yeah, so, but let me show you some of my yarn choices. So I thought I would start with the mohair because, okay, of course you need mohair for the sweater. So I have this one, one that I've mm, been drooling over for a very long time. It's Kit Silk Lace by Wolmet Fever, who is a Dutch indie dyer, um, Sylvia. Um, she has dyed this and it's so, so beautiful. Uh, so I thought that would look really nice. And then, so I'm not sure if fingering weight works out, but I thought these two would be amazing together. See, I think that would be amazing. And I wanted, I originally wanted to uh, knit a shawl out of this, but I think it would be huge. Uh, I was thinking of the Feather Shawl by Andrea Maury. I know it's not called Feather, but it's something something Feather um, or Feather or something something. And um, in the FO pictures, they all look huge. 
and I'm like, no, <laughs> I'm not gonna do that. So I think um, I might want to use it for this. And <laughs> oh my god, this looks so pretty. Oh my god, and this is actually called feather. <sighs> but I'm not gonna use it for the feather shawl. Yeah, but this colorway is called Feather by Ushitita, who is so popular right now. Um, yeah, I think that would look really, really nice. But again, I'm gonna have to figure out if if that will work. Fingering weight. So yeah, there's that, and then I have. This mohair also by Wolmuth Fiava. So pretty. So pretty. And I actually wanted to use this for a shawl as well. And I had originally paired it with this one from Bärenwolle. From Vicky, who sadly doesn't die anymore. But yeah, I have this skein of hers and it looks amazing. So I'm not sure if I will do anything with this. Or, <laughs> this is difficult. Okay, so I still have these. So these are a um, bed of flowers by Craftfulness. It came with the bag I just showed my last whip in. But I think the contrast is not enough. I think there's not enough contrast there. Yeah, uh, so I'm thinking if this will work, but this is a plumper yarn than this because this is really, really thin, really light fingering. And this is also fingering weight, but it's so plump. And uh, Momo is playing with the paper again. Um, it's so plump, so it might be the yarn I'm looking for. Oh, interesting. It works because there's blue here. Okay, come in. I'm going to think about that some more. And then I have chink fiber. And I thought that would be very cool as a mohair as well. So this is on the floor. Everything's on the floor in my house. And I, uh, I use this in photography to for the shadows. Okay, I've, and of course now I've taken this away and she's playing with my blocking mats. <sighs> Alrighty. So I've seen someone using the Suri Alpaca um, for the yoke and it just it's not translucent enough so yeah I was looking forward to to using this but it's too thick and not translucent enough to use as the yoke but oh it's so pretty yeah and then I also have these skeins from La Biena May and I thought that would that would also be cool but again this is very thin fingering weight and yes would it be enough can I change the pattern to to account for this I don't know so I'm gonna have to see if anyone has made it in fingering weight if you know please let me know if you know, please let me know. If you know, please uh, tell me in the comments. Um, yeah, but these I thought were really pretty. And again, I bought these to make a shawl. So many shawl stash. So much shawl stash, but yeah, not enough shawl knitting. So yeah, and I really, really wanted to make this. Another thing that's on my list is... Um, the Enchanted Mesa sweater by Stephen West. And, you know, these are some of the yarns I had in mind for that because, you know, they kind of 
go together. <sighs> oh my god. Yeah. I'm still leaning towards this one for the SFT. Still leaning towards this one. Yeah. Yes. But, okay, we'll see about that. And then, uh, so the pattern I already shared was the uh, Home Sweet Home Knit Formula by Tina Say. And uh, I have to look into this pattern because she says it's a formula. So I might be able to modify it slightly because it looks uh, huge. And um, a lot of the things I make end up being, look at this one, seriously. So a lot of the things I make myself are, um, are meant to be like, uh, where where to work oh, seriously where to work things or you know where I say things but end up as being slouchy uh, homeware stuff and I see a lot of knitters do that as well like oh I meant for this sweater to be more fitted but it turned out to be oversized so yeah what yeah I'm just gonna wear it at home and I want to not do that I mean I of course I want to wear my knitwear at home, but I I want to wear it uh, in public as well. And uh, this cardigan was so big, and I think I would uh, only wear it at home. So I might be able to modify it just slightly, so that maybe it's a cropped cardigan, kind of more like a blazer. Um... Just not gonna happen today. Yes, so, but I'm, um, so the SFT and the home, sweet home knit formula, I'm thinking of making those both, and then the third one I will still have to think about that. Um, but I still have the whole year. Uh, yeah. Oh, right, and what I really wanted to knit as well was the Spectre by Hohi Locatelli. But I actually wanted to knit things by people of color who are not really, um, like, well-known yet. Uh, like, okay, I can knit three things by Michelle Wong, but the thing here is uh, that I want to uh, get to know more uh people of color who are designers so expanding uh the i don't know what i'm expanding like getting to know more um people of color who are designers so yeah i couldn't it's uh things by michelle wong and by hohi locatelli and um yeah but i want to discover more people so yeah, so I'm gonna keep you updated on what I made, but you know, that's what this podcast is about, so that goes without saying. Um, and another thing that I am going to change in my uh, knitting and crochet life is um, that I'm gonna use more people of color as my models for my photography. And um, I am uh, working in a company where a lot of people of color work and um, um, yeah, and I've, uh, I've asked them to be my models previously, uh, but now I'm kind of becoming more conscious about it, I guess and uh, wanting to use them more because although I have um, uh, used people of color as models in my photography, it doesn't really show in my Instagram feed. My Instagram feed is still very, very white, so I'm gonna <laughs> kind of, um, yeah, I want to change that. So yeah, kind of um, balance it out a little bit. Okay, so yeah this is not the episode where i talk about all of my whips that's going to be the next episode yeah because on the same i actually have notes this time so yeah it's on the same page uh, of my make nine thing um 
Yes. I feel like this episode was so rambly, but, and I hopefully I'm gonna edit it and then just refine it a little bit. I think that's all for me today. Uh, I want to say a special thank you to uh, Sucrita, uh, Grace Anna Farrow, uh, who, who is a stitch to wear on Instagram, um, The Color Mustard on Instagram, sorry I forgot to look up your name, um, Sounds Like a Win, The Petite Knitter, um, Nori Chan Knits, um, Ocean by the Sea, Getting, I'm forgetting other Tina Sainitz, of course. Um, yeah, thank you all for taking your time to educate us. I've learned a lot from you guys, and yeah, I'm very grateful. So, thank you. And of course, also a special thank you to all of my Patreon supporters um, who help to keep this podcast running and help to support my designs. Um, yeah, I'm looking at this huge pile of yarn. And I'm talking about dream knitting while I still have... Seriously, Momo. Well, I still have 15 whips, so I'm, I'm going to hold off casting on new things, except for the second hat of this one, because I need two for the photo shoot. And then I'm going to determine which whips I want to finish, by what time, or gonna put them in time out a few months longer and then I'm gonna see what I will cast on but I will have a sweater for Edinburgh Yarn Fest that is one of my um, objectives yes so yes I'm going to Edinburgh Yarn Fest yay and uh, so if you are going please let me know because I would like to meet up and yeah so I'm thinking to do the SFT as my Edinburgh Yarn Fest sweater, or, or maybe both, is that too ambitious? The Ice Flower Sweater by Sustainablest Co. Yes. Yes. Um, okay, I'm feeling super rambly right now. And part of me wishes that this episode would have gone more smoothly, but the other part is like, well, you know, this is me, and I've said things that I wanted to say, um, and that's okay. And there will be people who don't agree with what I say, and which is what I'm kind of worrying about, I guess. But I will see. And please let me know if I've said anything wrong. I mean, I probably did. Uh, but I'm also still learning. Um, yes, slowly working my, th my way through this. I hope with a lot of you guys together. And yeah, let's make the knitting and craft community a better place. That's the main thing that I want to say. Ah, <sighs> such a heavy episode. <laughs> All right, I am going to leave you with some bonus Momo footage. And I'm gonna wish you a very nice couple of weeks and I'll see you all very, very soon. Bye-bye. Okay, breaking news, this just in. <laughs> I just received a package and I thought I knew what it was because I have ordered something from a friend of mine in uh, the UK and it said, you know, has this UK stamp. So I thought that's what it was, but it's not. 
Oh my god. This is the last yarn that I have purchased. It's it's the first yarn that I have purchased this year and the last yarn that I am allowing myself to purchase before Edinburgh Yarn Fest. And because it was a pre-order, I thought, well, it was scheduled to come to arrive much later, but it's arrived. So I am opening it. I haven't told you what it is. So but look at this bag, so cute. And ooh. okay, you guys ready? I love this. I've never done this un unboxing, un unbagging on a podcast. One, two, three. Oh God! Oh! <laughs> it's twisted lemon. Yay! <laughs> And Momo's here as well. She was sleeping downstairs. Yay! My very first ever Twisted Limon. Ooh. And it came with chocolate coconut tea. Oh my goodness. I love that she's wound it already. I actually thought it would come in just a skein or in a hank or what, whatever. Um, yeah, Twisted Limon. So I am never able to catch one of her updates. They go so fast. But then in the first week of the new year, I think, uh, she had pre-orders. Just uh, pre-orders for a whatever colorway you want. And I thought, huh. I'm just going to do it. Because... and and. Um, so then, uh, then came the dilemma, okay, which colorway am I going to go for? Because, um, you know, when it's a shop update, you, it's easy. Well, easy. You just pick the one you like best and buy it and that's the end. Or that's a start. But, you know, um, you know what I mean. So when I could pick the colorway myself, I was like... So I had a browse through her Instagram and this one, well, there were a couple that I love, but um, this one really jumped out to me and this is the Rose Bowl colorway. Rose Bowl. And it's different shades of pink and purple and orange. And yeah, I think these are my colors. So that's why I picked this one. Yay! Yes, uh, I think it was supposed to take around four weeks, but it has taken three weeks, I think. I, I hadn't expected it yet. So this is a very, very, very nice surprise. Thank you so much, Karen, who is the dyer behind Twisted Limon. Thank you so much for dyeing up this gorgeousness. And I'm going to be having so much fun knitting this. I haven't decided yet if I'm gonna knit it just as it is, stripy socks, or if I'm gonna combine it with a, another, with a contrast yarn and make stripy um, color work socks. I don't know. I don't know. Stripy stranded socks. Yes, so I wanted to show you, and it kind of matches my drink. <laughs> All right, okay, I'm gonna get back to what I actually need to do today. Okay, have a great one. Bye-bye. <laughs>